As you recall in an earlier training video, I introduced you to the search feature, which is an element of Windows Explorer or exploring Windows or your computer. And that element, and in fact, all the other elements of Windows Explorer can be found in any folder on your computer. You just have to open it up. For example, there's my exercises folder. Double click, open it up, and there it is in the upper right hand corner. The element of Windows Explorer searching my folder that I'm currently in, which is the exercises. Again, as we learned, we just have to type in our keywords and it will filter in and only display those files that match the keywords. But it only searches this folder here. Now this search field will only search the folder that I'm currently in. So if I can't find what I'm looking for within the folder, but I know I have it somewhere on my computer and I want to do a computer search, well, close out to do that search. Come down here and click on the Start button. And up here, click in the Search Programs and Files field. And whatever keywords you type in here will do a broad search across your entire computer. Just go ahead and type it in. And then notice up at the top it says it found 23 files, but it only displays about 14 here. So if you want to be able to see all the results, all 23 files, come down here and click on See More Results. Let me come up here and double click on the header bar really fast to maximize the window to fill the screen here. And there we go. Down below it says it found 22 items. And so I can, you know, scroll down and look at the other items. But right off the bat, you can see that it found some of the files and highlighted the keywords here. But these other files don't show that the keywords are highlighted. Well, you ought to know that anytime you do an instant search, whether within a specific folder or broadly across the entire computer, as I'm showing you here, It'll search four places within the file. It'll search the file's name, and if it matches, of course, it'll highlight it. Then it'll search the file's content, and then the file's tags, which we learned in a previous training video, how to tag the file with extra keywords so they're searchable, not just by the file name and the content of the file, and also the file's properties. So, for example, if I select this file, down below you can see in the details pane, well, the title looks like it's been tagged with gummy bears, of course, if I double click and open it up, well, it's in the title of the first slide here, Gummy Bears. Great. Close out. So the details pane, when you select the file up above, will give us some of the keywords or tags and some of the properties. But to get all of the properties, you can, of course, when in doubt, right click on the file, go down to properties, come to the details tab, and, well, there's some of the properties that you would see down in your details pane, like the title. You don't see the subject. It's not down there. Uh, the tags you see them, categories, no, and the comments. So again, the properties of a file will give you more information and includes all the details that, that you see down below when you select the file from up above in the details pane. And then, of course, everything else probably makes a little bit more sense. There it is in the file name and then in the contents of the file. In any case, when I'm finished, let me scroll back up. And I want to be able to do this search again, or I may use this search in the future. Instead of having to go through all this and, and typing those keywords, gummy bears, just come up here on the command bar and click on Save Search. And then by default, it uses the keywords in your search as the file name. Go ahead and click Save. And when you save it, it adds it over here underneath your favorites in your navigation pane. So if I come up here and close out of here and I open up any folder on my computer, like Holidays, double click. There it is, over here in the navigation pane. So if I need to do that search real quick, click on it, boom, it does the search, and it pulls up gummy bears, including the shortcut, which is over here, my favorites, and also the actual save search. And then, of course, when I'm done with it, just right-click on it and say remove, and it removes it from my favorites, and then I can close out. Let me go back to my exercises folder here, and I'm going to introduce you to the advanced search feature now which has been updated or changed from the previous versions of Windows, Windows XP, Windows Vista. In fact, you're used to that when you come up here in previous versions of Windows and you type in the keyword here in the search box, that if you couldn't find what you were looking for, you had a little button over here that said Advanced Search, or the text, that when you click on the Advanced Search, it opened up and you can go ahead and you had all these fields you can type in, like the Date and the Date field or the Size and the Size field. Well, that's been done away with in Windows 7. Well, out with the old and new with the new, and the new advanced search feature in Windows 7 is called the Advanced Query Syntax, or AQS. Breaking it down, advanced means that it's more than just a simple keyword search. Query means that you're inquiring, or you're still doing a search. And syntax is a formula. As you recall from your mathematical days, you can also watch my Excel training videos. We build formulas in that to perform some mathematical functions. But for the syntax here, it's really simple. You're not doing really anything mathematical. You're just basically adding another character to your search to help define what you want to search for. 
for example. When I come up here and I click in the search field and I type in the word gummy, it pulls up all the files that have those keywords gummy within it, right? Well, what if I want to just find a file that has only in the file name the word gummy instead of pulling up all these others? Let me come up here and click on the X to clear it and click off in a blank area. Of course, you're looking at this saying, well, that's not a difficult find because really you only have a few files. You can see it right here. But again, this is if you have thousands of files within a folder across your computer and you want to narrow the search. So here's the syntax. Come up here, click in the field, type in the word name, and then what makes it a syntax is when you hold down the shift key and hit the semicolon so it comes out as a colon. So bring up the colon, okay? So name, colon, hit the space bar, and then go ahead and type in the keyword or words that you want to search for just within the file's name. So I'm going to go ahead and type in gummy. And it only pulls up that file because remember it pulled up that other file, but it had gummy in the content of the file or that spreadsheet. And right here, my syntax says just look in the file's name for the keyword gummy. Cool. Let me come up here and click on the X to clear the search. Another popular search syntax is the word kind colon. Come up here, click in it, type in the word kind colon, and then after you type it, it brings up a list of different kinds of files. And all you have to do is scroll through it and be able to select the kind of file that you would like. So what kind? I want them to be pictures and it only pulls up the pictures. So let me go ahead and close out. Now you can get a little bit more fancy with your searches here. If I come back up here and I say, well, I would like to find gummy, okay? But in the name, colon, there has to be product. So gummy can be anywhere, but in the name, or the name of the file, it has to have the word product. So you can do some mixing within your syntax here when you build your formula to do your searches, okay? You can even use kind and say the kind of file it has to be is a picture and then go ahead and do a name and in the name of the picture it has to be this name and then in the name of the file of the picture it has to be something and, and you can keep going and adding more and more and building up your syntax or your searchable formula. Let me go ahead and close out, clear out of that query. Now there's a lot more formulas that you can put together and instead of me going through all this which could take, hmm, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes or an hour. How about if I just take you to Microsoft's website and it'll list all of these syntaxes for your advanced query syntax searches. All you have to do is go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. Let me click it and open it up. Type in your search engine here or up here in the search field. Advanced query syntax. Hit enter. And you want to look for Microsoft.com's website and there it is. You can see I visited it before because it's in purple. Click on it and scroll down and it gives you a little history of the Windows Search Advanced Query Syntax and it says well you might be wondering how you can be more efficient when it comes to finding files and emails and so da 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 the AQS feature. In any case you can see that when I scroll down here when you want to be able to find certain things like the author's name type in author colon and then their actual name so they give you the property and then they actually give you the example so quite a few examples even your dates if you want to find something before a certain date type in before colon and then the date so if something's before this date you'll find it if it's there to be found on your computer and scroll down even the size in fact I can come up here click and drag and select it right click on it and copy it so it's saying the size has to be between, which is greater than or equal to 50 kilobytes, but less than or equal to 70 kilobytes. So when I copy that formula, come down here to my exercises folder and come up here and right click and paste it, well, I'll be jiggered. It actually found a file. And you can see the size of the file is in between 50 and 70 kilobytes, greater than 50, less than 70. Cool. Now if you don't use it, you lose it, so unless you're a scatterbrain and you got things all over your computer, you're constantly searching and you're so disorganized, then man, you're going to be brilliant on these syntaxes here because you constantly use them every day. But if you're really organized, you probably won't use them as much. In any case, you do have the reference of the website there to pull it back up or this training video. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.